Following on from the BGH1, which took the essence of a GH5S and packed it in a block style body, Panasonic Lumix have now just released this, the BS1H. And this time they've really upped the ante because this is essentially their flagship S1H rehoused as a block camera. So straight to the point, the BS1H has the exact same video performance and capabilities as the S1H. And if you're not familiar with that camera, then the real headline recording specs is that it can record up to 6K video at 24 frames a second, 5.9K at up to 30, and DCI 4K at up to 60, all in 10-bit 420, internally without any recording time limits. You can also record in 10-bit 422 if you drop down to DCI 4K 30. Now it still uses the same 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor with a selectable dual native ISO which resolves up to 14 plus stops of dynamic range. And in my time shooting with the S1H and now the BS1H, I really do find the images that these cameras produce to be very appealing, especially working with Vlog, which comes as standard. Now, of course, there's lots of footage online already that's been captured using the S1H, so you can confidently use that as a reference for what this camera can produce. The body is near identical in size to the BGH1, which considering they've now fit a full frame sensor in there is pretty impressive, and it's almost half the weight of the S1H2. On the front, we do now have some additional function buttons. There are now seven user customizable buttons around the body in total along with a new switch to lock off all of the controls. Everything else is pretty much the same. On the side, we have the dual SD card slots that support both relay and backup recording, the side vents for keeping the camera cool, which essentially gives us that unlimited recording time, and of course, plenty of quarter 20 mounts around the body, which gives plenty of options for rigging this camera and mounting accessories. Now, given the nature of this camera, much like the BGH1, there is no built-in EVF or monitor. Now, the big benefit of these Lumix block style cameras compared to their hybrid counterparts is not just the form factor for easier rigging or mounting drones and gimbals, for example, but it's the improved IO. On top of the expected HDMI output, you do also get a 3G SDI. The HDMI output can output up to DCI 4K60 or higher if raw, which I'll get to, whilst the SDI is limited to 1080 60 but both are active whilst recording internally, and a 10-bit 422. Now you can choose to display the menu system of the camera on either of those outputs or none. I say none because you can also remotely control the camera via Wi-Fi with the Lumix Sync app on a smartphone. A step further is that you can also control it from a Windows or Mac machine using the Lumix Tether for Multicam software, which is much more comprehensive. You can connect the camera directly using a USB cable or put it on a LAN using either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. If using the latter, then you can also power the camera via that Ethernet port because it does support PoE+, which is really neat. Ultimately, from this software, you can control all parameters and settings of up to 12 of these cameras, including triggered recording simultaneously across them all, saving and matching settings, and even doing remote firmware updates. It really makes for a very powerful multi-camera setup. Now, of course, with multi-camera work in mind, these block cameras do also have dedicated BNCs for timecode and genlock, so sync really shouldn't be an issue. Again, compared to their hybrid counterparts, these block cameras do run much bigger batteries. The VBR59, for example, should power this camera for around about 12 hours off a single charge. So for longer shoots, there's much less faffing around swapping those smaller batteries every two hours or so. And you do also have a built-in DC barrel for mains power for longer sessions. I mentioned raw output via the HDMI before, and that's of course because if you're wanting to work with more data, you can actually capture up to 5.9K at 25 frames a second in 12-bit ProRes RAW by using an Atomos NGV with the BS1H and the BGH1. However, this takes it up a notch, because not only that, if Blackmagic RAW is more your thing, then alternatively, you can use a Blackmagic Video Assist 12G to record in B-RAW 2. Now, much like the rest of the recent Lumix models, the DMW XLR1 audio adapter works seamlessly with the BS1H, giving you two XLR inputs, both of which can provide phantom power. This camera does have a live streaming encoder built into it too. 
the BS1H can stream in up to 4K 60p in either H.264 or H.265 using the RTP RTSP protocol. If you wanted to, you could essentially power, control, and live stream from this camera using just the one ethernet cable. There's also an SDK available for both the Lumix cameras, so if you want to write your own custom code for operation and control, you can do. The BS1H is a mighty powerful block camera that could feel at home fixed in a studio environment or out on location as a cine style camera. If you guys have got any questions about it, then please do put them in the comments and I will get back to you. And if I don't know the answer, then I do have a unit right here now, so I'll test it out for you and find out. And for more information, pricing and accessories, head over to the Holden website. Thanks for watching.